Vimar Marcos, seven. Marisek Peter, number nine, Erazo Juan, number ten, Pont. Here Ulrich. we go, the game started already. Oh. And uh, Vienna is in uh, blue and Firenze is in white. The Do we know the referees already? The, yeah, the chief referee is uh, Horus uh, applying for uh, international license. The camera is already fr is again frozen on the right side. Right. So Horus from Colombia as a chief referee. Tommy from uh, Denmark on the in the water and Kaiser from Sweden in the water too. So give you some more numbers as so long as we're not seeing anything. It's number eight, Wiesner, Jan Over, 31, Karl Struber, Peter, number four, Kinderman Jan, 19, Landi, Belgian, 14, Denk, Thomas. So if you see any of, of the players and uh, you're recognizing the numbers, you can follow them now. <coughs> so we see Firenze in white and we see Vienna in blue. Both teams lost so far all their matches played against uh, Bamberg and they played against uh, the uh, Turkish team. Turkish team, yes. But uh, uh, both teams could score at least, even against the Turkish, isn't it? So I have seen this penalty from uh, Firenze and from Vienna too. Let me see. So both teams had already uh, occurred a penalty <coughs> in their matches. So might be a good opportunity now here to score because this is maybe if they want to score she'll do it in this game <laughs> so we see now here Vienna coming up with a great attack you can see the attacker number seven it was um, Peter Marsek he he was attacking the defender and he dropped a bit he, he loosened a bit the contact to the crown it was a good opportunity to bring the ball behind his back unfortunately the goalkeeper defender did a really well job and, and uh, caught the ball immediately so we've been back on the track here. The Vienna, Vienna is increasing the pressure, starting quite well here. <coughs> but Firenze also is doing a good job so far. So we have played already two, a bit more than two minutes, and it's a uh, no clear goal. But we're mostly in the Italian half, and uh, uh, Vienna does a good job keeping the ball yep. uh, right outside of uh, distance of the Italians, and from time to time just um, punching into the defense. But uh, we didn't have a real goal this chance. Is this is one of the first attack one. on the goalkeeper, off the neck of the goalkeeper. The reaction of the defender was quite good. He has seen that the that the attacker really had a good grip at the at the head or the neck of the goalkeeper, so he supported by rising his hands. And uh, pulling the uh, the attacker, the blue attacker down. So this was a good reaction from the yeah. defender. Goal from a uh, call from the referee, and it's a free throw um, against Vienna. So let's see if the Italians uh, how they uh, work their way into the half of Vienna, and uh, what they do if they get close to the Austrian basket. Now we can see here, uh, Firenze player with the 69 here, stealing the basket. Unfortunately, Firenze is not able to bring the ball and pass him. 69 was Panchi Andrea, who was here in a good position. But now there's a fast break. Oh, there's an opportunity to score an empty net goal. This was very well defended by Firenze. You know, with his last brief, he was taken dear the attacker and he, and he grabbed his arm. This was awesome. <coughs> Now we see here, of course, the, the favor in this, probably the score, isn't it? No, it's not. So the ball is still not in the basket so far, so there was a really good chance here for Vienna, followed by a, by a fast break um, towards the empty goal. So there was a was one of the players, he, he really jumped in and, and saved the goal, and then uh, followed by a second wave now. So defense. Italy it's really open, yeah, but finally they they, they save it at a, they're save it from the ring. <laughs> Italy has to get uh, into attack mode and uh, out of these constant attacks uh, from Vienna because <coughs> otherwise uh, they will score within the next uh, second. Yeah, if they keep up their waves going into and they are really the the Italians only chance is to tackle away um, the the ball carrier from their defense and they cannot uh, hold on uh, like this for. A longer time. You can see here the first gaps in the Firenze defense. So the gaps are getting bigger and bigger. So Firenze really needs to focus at their baskets. I'm not really sure who is here in favor. We need to maybe count the, the goals so far. But 
at least none of this team wants to lose the game. So, but at the moment, it's definitely Vienna here dominating the game. This was also very well done by number four, um, who is a young Kinderman, who attacked the defender at the neck and tried to bring the ball behind his back. But Italy is uh, up for it. it they yeah. are still keeping the same pace and they, their reaction time is uh, again fast enough to deal with these attack and to interfere with them. And so far uh, Austria has the upper hand. Yeah. But they didn't succeed to they break succeed. really the, the into the defense. And the Italians holding on. But this will go on, will not go on very long. I'm not really sure what is the, the attacking strategy or technique, but this is this one is a good one. Tried by number seven, Peter Maciek again. So so we have here certain certain style or pattern in the attacking, but currently I see a lot of Austrian players attacking by their own. So they're alone and they're coming from up. So it's like they're starting from the servers, attacking directly the goalkeeper. So this is something what teams are usually doing when they're losing their ideas so they had very good attacks they had very good team attacks they should continue doing this it's just probably a matter of time till they score and Firenze on the other side of course they need to focus on the defense there are a lot of gaps and they they should now try to get into the game by having the ball and playing by themselves and uh, uh, vielleicht sollten wir auch ein bisschen deutsch für unsere österreichischen Zuschauer sprechen um, Österreich ist hier um, Kontrolliert bisher das äh, Spiel relativ gut. Und ähm, hier sieht man eine, eine schnelle Gegenattacke auf ein leeres Tor. Awesome. Super schnelle Counter, very fast counterattack from Austria uh, on the empty basket of the Italians. <coughs> Unfortunately, I have not seen the number. It was something with with a six or something. Could be 19. But this was something the Italians had to do. They had to open up and go forward and put pressure on the Austrian basket. Otherwise, they would have been pinned all the time on their own basket and would catch a goal nevertheless. So it's, uh, it was a try. Didn't succeed in this, in this attack. But now they go forward again. And we are at the Austrian basket on the close side. So unfortunately, we could not see the number. I assume it was a six or something, but a uh, player with a six is not on the on the team list. But of course, we've seen now three or four very fast counter attacks here from Vienna. This was the first one now um, occurred into an empty net goal. Um, this was quite impressive, uh, but it was, yeah, it was to uh, yeah. But uh, when you see the Italians attacking, they do right now. Don't underestimate them. They will uh, use any chance to, to score here. The ball dropped down in the hands of the goalkeeper from Vienna. He oh tries to break free. The ball was almost loose in the hands of an Italian. But now they are safe, are on a safe distance away from their own basket. And we go, we are on the way again to the Italian basket. If the camera switches, yes, yeah. here we are. It's a pity that Firenze got this goal on an empty, so it was empty, because they made a really yeah. good effort in yes. defending. So this is a bit pity, because they, they, they really did a they good did shot. They did better than that. At least to lose by an empty goal, yeah. it's like pff, quite tough if, this, if it's going to, to be that. Totally agree with you. And I think they, they are sad about it too, because they did a good job. Uh, fighting off the the uh, really tough attacks, and then they caught the goal in a in a fast uh, counter attack. And you always see that Vienna when they have the the time to to breathe, like they're breathing at the surface and they're coming like in a uh, 45 degree angle, coming down, attacking here with two to three players. Now I have seen here a hand. Maybe I'm not sure if this is really is he was not holding the, the the basket. I'm not sure, but there's the goal. Finally, this was also this was wow. great. Didn't see that uh, yeah. happening. This was really great. This was a, a team, really nice team effort. So there was one, two attacking waves, very well defended by Firenze, but at least they were missing the power, so there was a free spot. And uh, we can unfortunately not see who it was, because the attack started from the open side, and then the guy passed the ball on the other side, and uh, where we had uh, then the uh, the free available player who scored. So it's 2-0 now, and we have 8 seconds left in the first half of the game. 
and it's a very uh, good game from both sides um, Austria the team from Vienna definitely controls the game um, but uh, Italy is doing a good job here the end of the That's first cool. half uh, and uh, it could even happen uh, Italy scores in the next um, in the next half here because they had their chances and they were able to do it but Austria is pinning them on their uh, on on the Italian goal and if they are defending uh, these heavy attacks they will catch probably another goal so they have to break through like they did and uh, risk like they did uh, the counter attack to be honest I've expected a bit more closer game from both sides because Firenze is also a very well experienced team I'm really surprised that they're having the, the ball so less time in their own row so it's like they are on the opponent side and immediately they're losing the ball and they're just in the defense positioning but they're here with with 14 players so it's not it's not a matter of, of lack of players or of, of stamina uh, it's really concentration and ball handling so Vienna with a squad of 13 players is doing a very well nice job and uh, Checking the numbers and the names, I assume that the score has been made by Matthias Worm with number five, because it's this, this one who looks the most similar to the number six. Um, yeah, this was the first, uh, the, the first score goal, and the second we could not see, as we, we repeated. The first goal was a, was a fast break. Um, the friends was too late at the basket, so number five, Matthias Worm could uh, throw it in the empty net. And on the other side, we had then uh, and this 2-1, who was uh, invited or uh, who was started by an attack from the open side. Very well done. And then they pushed the ball at the floor on the other side of the basket where a player was waiting and scored it. Unfortunately, we could not see the number. But uh, two very nice and quite dominant uh, yes. seeded goals. I think this first half definitely belongs to the Austrians. And... Uh, a little bit like we've seen before um, when a team is just reacting and the Italians was were reacting um, to the movements and the attacks of the Austrians yeah. but they it was really th they had one chance when they were in the spent time on the uh, Austrian basket but let's see what they do in the second half it's crazy yeah wenn man das Spiel so ein bisschen auf Deutsch so analysieren hatte die die Italiener sind zwar tatsächlich nur sehr selten auf die österreichische Seite gekommen. Wenn aber der Ballbesitz kam, haben die Österreicher direkt massiv immer mit zwei, teilweise sogar mit drei Leuten durchgekontert. Ähm, haben das eigentlich rechts immer ganz gut gemacht. Leider dann vorne den Ball so ein bisschen verstolpert. Bis eben auf diese eine Situation, wo er dann wirklich tatsächlich Oder gar keiner da war ja. und den dann halt reingefeuert haben. Und äh, im Gegenzug dazu natürlich auch parallel, wenn sie beim Gegner waren, auch da Druck aufgebaut hat. Das ist ein sehr einseitig dominierte Spiele in diesen beiden Variationen. Man hätte eventuell vermutet, die eine Mannschaft spielt mehr mit dem Ball und drückt an den Korb, während die andere kontert. Hier macht wirklich eine Mannschaft beides. Ja, ähm, morgen werden wir übrigens zwei aus der österreichischen Mannschaft äh, und können wir bitte wieder ins Spiel schalten, was vielleicht schon wieder <lacht> läuft. Ähm, wir werden morgen zwei äh, Spieler aus der österreichischen Mannschaft, äh, Jan Kindermann und äh, Thomas Denk hier als Moderator und Moderatoren haben, wenn sie gerade nicht selber spielen müssen. Here ah, we go, okay. back again uh, in the game. Uh, Italy is in ball possession, trying to break into the half of the Australians, but stopped by three Italian, uh, by three Austrian players. So far, it's now we see, uh, at the beginning we see a different Italian team, so this is really the first time. It also Firenze is attacking the goal or touching the defender who is in position. So I don't know if they've changed some players or they maybe made a, made a proper uh, motivating speech, but so far we see a more aggressive and uh, scoring focused Italian team. So let's see what, uh, what they can do so far. So Vienna, they're, they're well doing, I don't know what this, what this goal was like. <laughs> so there was a, the ball was thrown towards the goalkeeper and this is the, the next thing I'm saying. Now look, you have four players starting the counter attack, and uh, this is very impressive. So Vienna, they're doing here a very well job. Okay, maybe we have a referee call here. It's in favor for the Vienna, so it's a three throw for Vienna. And so we can say the first minute of the match, it was uh, Firenze now pushing, 
And uh, immediately after losing the ball, there was a, the first fast break from Vienna again with three players. And uh, yeah, this is very impressive. You know, I've not expected that. So Vienna is quite well um, prepared here. But still, we only have a 2-0 nice. lead from Vienna, and uh, they are attacking uh, at least uh, for 20, yeah. uh, for, for 15 yeah. minutes now. Here we have seen uh, Jan Ove Wiesner with the number eight who tried to score from the bottom, who is at least the son of Uwe Wiesner, who is at least the former coach of Vienna yep. and the current coach of Italy. That's Firenze. true. This is a quite nice uh, consolation, isn't it? It is. A lot of family, family heritage and history in the Austrian, Italian and the water rugby. And I think these, te these two teams know each other quite well. Yeah, that's true. At least they have been coached and trained a lot by this uh, German uh, coach Uwe Wiesner. So, more or less, both teams know a bit about the a certain strategy or game style because both had more or less the same teacher for years. Um, in the past, uh, Uwe Wiesner was uh, head coach of Italian national team. Then he uh, moved to, Aust to Austria uh, for for another couple of years until he last year or two years ago, I don't know, I'm not really sure, moved back to Italy as a national head coach. So, um, yeah, both teams are at least they are familiar a bit and met each other well a couple this of is times. This, this was, nice. was, a, was a dangerous attack uh, yeah. from the Australians on the Italian basket. Number nine, Almost pushed the goalkeeper up and the attack is still is going on. They are still one. pushing on the goalkeepers from Italy. And the goalkeeper just wants to come up to breathe, but this is also a very dangerous situation. Of course, <laughs> even if you need to breathe as a goalkeeper and it's quite close to you, you need to focus. Of course, it's you can't just choose. Do you want to breathe or do you want to win? This is a, a quote familiar used or often used in other words. So the wave uh, of the attacks from yeah. Austria come in and come in, come in. And uh, compared to this, uh, Italy does quite well in defending them off. Um, but they, they only can tackle them away. They don't get the chance mm. to get a distance between themselves and their own basket. And this puts a lot of stress in the defense and a lot of takes a lot of uh, um, energy from them. Now we have a cluster on the surface and the two teams are fighting and slowly moving in the direction of the Austrian team. Ball is falling down in the hands of an Austrian player. He tries to swim free. And the next station, uh, for the next player is waiting, and we are forward, going back to the Italian basket. Yeah. But we see always the, Aus the Austrian team. This is also a very nice attack here. It was, I think, it was again number eight. I've seen, uh, not really seen the number, but it looked like an eight. So, very, very nice attacks here. So, it, it, it's interesting to see how Vienna is. It's going forward is attacking the goal is mm. bringing is positioning player at the basket and trying to bring the ball there so um they were very self confident very nice so far uh Vienna is very self confident yeah. in this game and uh, they know how to control it's a call from the referee and it's a free throw against uh, Vienna so there are 5 minutes left and we are wondering if there's any support in the live chat do we have here Supporters for Vienna or for Florence, so make some noise, go in and type something to support your team. Even if you have any nice facts or questions, just let us know. 211 people watching uh, this game. Austria against Italy, a uh, team from Vienna in uh, blue against uh, the team from Firenze in white. But you see here, it's, it's quite nice to see how it, it looks very easy how... Um, how Vienna could come in ball position, even if they have the ball, there's no white person immediately attacking them, so they have a lot of space, getting the ball under control, orientating themselves and looking what may be the best to do with the ball. This is something a good team is usually not giving to you, so when you're, when you're achieve oh, this was a nice one, number nine here, had a very good chance, you received the ball from the other side of the basket, and there's the second oh wave scoring. Is. Very, very nice. You have seen, this is typical right now. Uh, for the Vienna. Italians are uh, yeah. tired. Very frustrated here, tired, frustrated probably. But this was awesome. You have seen Juan Arasa with the number nine on the open side. He got the ball first out of nothing. He attacked, then he broke up, but he was not going to the surface. He stopped at halfway up, 
and then he had the chance to pass the ball down to another player waiting there immediately close to the basket and he finally scored this was a great a very great move three and a half minutes left here in the second half it's still a uh, 3-0 so uh, Italy hasn't scored yet and they're in the attack on the Australian basket and still uh, Italy is good for uh, for scoring but uh, Austria is very wide awake and self-confident even when Italy is on the attack mode and this Italian player is fighting heavily against uh, the whole it looks like the whole Austria Austrian team on the surface we have cluster on the surface now ball is not free we don't see what's happening uh, here Austria comes out of the cluster nice you know the pool is not very big but it, it's very wondering that the that the oh, oh yes was number 18 here with a great chance Markus Wimmer he had the one one situation attacking the goalkeeper but didn't score but I'm very wondering because the pool is very small you need to notice it's just 12 and a half meters and there's a player starting from the one side immediately at the wall and he can swim with the ball the entire way to the other side of the basket without being disturbed by anyone and this is quite quite a, a, a strange situation because there are six players of each team in the water so we have another attack wow another attack from the close side and another goal and another goal so this is the 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 amount of pressure the Italians have to face is taking uh, their uh, uh, is wearing them out and we see them now breaking uh, much often and much faster We have so Jens Dingel here supporting any team. I'm not really sure which one because he's German. It's <laughs> 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 well quite nice to have your comment here in the, in the live chat. Jens, welcome uh, here in the live chat. So Hello, Jens. Uh, Paul Donnerbauer supporting Vienna. Oh, this is a chance for Italy. The There's an Italian player lying the on the basket of the... Ah, that was close. But um, the, the Austrians <laughs> were wide awake here and um, careful not to lose the ball very concentrated play yeah. by the Austrian uh, team and even this attack when a uh, Italian player stole the basket from them didn't succeed this also a great move here from number five here Matthias Wurm who made the first score here is really nice with his with his body language here uh, close at the door uh, close at the basket he's just in his position he's not giving up the the contact to the basket just turned around with his body and uh, used the ball for the next wave 45 seconds left, so just penalty left. time left uh, yeah. in this game, and it's a 4 0 lead for uh, Vienna. Well played by Vienna, but also yeah. well played oh by Italy. There was another goal. Oh, wow, that was just. But this, was, this was quite clear because they came from the surface and they attacked immediately the goalkeeper at the first step, and then they passed the ball down at the bottom. And there were two Austrian players waiting, and there was no one else. We just had the goalkeeper changed. And the defender is too far away from the basket. So, what should you do as a goalkeeper in this position? It's well, it's he, very he had not many alternatives. I have not Ten expected Fiorenti to lose in 5 0. I think I, I will think they are better closer. than this. I don't know what, is it, what was the strategy yeah. of this game. But now the game is over. And uh, yeah, there's a clear victory. A very, uh, it, it was a clear match, but I've not expected it will be that clear. Um, based on the on the experience and the matches we've seen in the past from both teams they both met even in the past a couple of times and it was always close like two or two one or something like that but the five zero this is this is very very clear but uh, Austria did a very good game and uh, Italy was definitely, reacting definitely. all the time so we come to the last game uh, of the day and uh, this is Bamberg against uh, the Turkish team uh, DYSK uh, and this is gonna be what number do we have? Uh, 5 0 oh, Since we uh, I didn't get uh, the Gracias uh, Fede Since we didn't get the Finnish candies yet we get Colombia candies Mm. Mm. Ah, oh yeah. Mm. 
probably that's very sweet. <laughs> so game One coming up. Twenty left. Let's start with the game. So we have the with the Turkish team, and they told me that it's a. I've I've asked the Turkish team what happened with the with their name, and they just told me it's the same team but with a different name. <laughs> and they told me some issues are, for example, like the uh, yeah. It's just that just players, there are not uh, officials, so it's like if you have trouble in Turkey, maybe you change your name and everything is all right. I don't, I'm not really familiar with what happened, but let's talk about the uh, the squad now. So let Where me do we have? I don't have the team list from Bamberg here. Where oh is, no, it is, is it? Up? Wait. So we can see Bamberg here. So oh let's I start with Bamberg first in the blue team. Bamberg playing in blue with number one, Hoffman fight. Number two, Hannes Hoffman. Number four, Lukas Tadar, the captain. No, no, it's not the captain. The captain is number two, Hannes Hoffmann. It's the coach, Lukas Tadar. Number five, Clemens Neumüller. Number six, Hannes Treiber. Seven, Markus Beringer. Number nine, Adam Flussmann. Eleven, Sebastian Lange. Twelve is Niklas Tadar. Thirteen is Geza Todd. Fourteen is Michael Nusir. Fifteen is Andreas Weisenberger. We have thirteen, who is Sebastian Hornung. And eighty-seven, who is Jan Hoffmann. On the other side, we're talking about... Uh, we are introducing you to the Turkish team, and uh, this is well, we're not on, this on the list. We I don't have we the we list, I think. Wasn't it a problem? Yeah, we need the Turkish team from the internet, probably, if you have it. Because we have here a proper list, but unfortunately it's, it's not complete. Team list. Uh, so I hope we are ready now. We can switch back to the uh, game, because it should start immediately the time is already running down teams should be prepared the Turkish team is playing in white both teams won all their games but the Turkish team received a goal in every game so far by a penalty so it's it seems to be that they have a small issue with the goalkeeper or with anything like holding or shoulder something the referees don't like so um, if there's a good chance to score they are uh, probably using the methods they're not not really comfortable with the rules so the referees in this game um, our uh, chief referee yeah, out yeah. on the water is Lars from the Denmark Robert from uh, Austria and Manuel from Sweden so Lars is out of the water and Robert and Manuel are in the water this is very good this well, is well, what <laughs> very good sweets candies from Colombia yes okay um, I guess this uh, when is the time this game should start at um, 9.30? 9.30. Yeah, and we have 9.27. Uh, Since we're in Germany, we have to wait three minutes here. All right, for the highlight match. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about, uh, Thorsten? Yeah, we, we can introduce maybe the Turkish team because we have not ah, done yeah, this yeah. yet. Yeah, you want to do it? Your Turkish is better than so mine. We're starting with, uh, unfortunately, still we don't have the numbers. But I can tell you that they will be in the squad. will be Hakan Toka. There will be Ekin Koch. Uh, Koch. It will be Kerem Demir, it will be Osan Özdemir, Berkan Mert, Zuri Oglu, there will be Ilkan Gökhard, there will be Onur Ceylan, there will be Ugur Ceylan, there will be Fatih Ask Azrak, Khan uh, Bakir Zijoglu, Khan Boskurt and Umut Filis. I hope it was more or less understandable for you guys. Mm -hmm. So, waiting for the one of the highlight matches. I think one of the highlight matches we had today was the Arkar and Orcas game. We were really looking forward to that to see um, how Orcar could handle the uh, Norwegian team. What Orca I'm really curious really about uh, to see the the Italian the Turkish team now really under pressure because what we've seen so far is. Um, a good Turkish team, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen them against a team that really forces them to to get the rabbit out of the hat. So uh, Bamberg will uh, will be a quite a, an uh, amazing opponent here for yeah. them. Perfect, it's perfect. Two really good teams. We have one team like the Turkish. The Turkish pattern is more or less to come very massive um, at the very beginning. Very physical. Very physical. Even they they're trying to make a long break, like breathing at the surface. And then coming down as a team uh, together and trying to um, to score. While on the other hand, you have Bamberg, a team 
that tries to play in a very close at the basket, trying to keep the ball down all the time. They're never going to the surface with four players trying to play the ball around there. So they're focused in keeping the ball close to the basket, increasing the pressure, forcing the, the, the opponent to make failures, to keep some gaps. And, and you have to consider there. the the Turkish team has the uh, Euroleague experience, a lot of these players, and Bamberg doesn't. So I think it gives the uh, every team it gives them an edge uh, to 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 play in these these tougher games, higher level. But on the other hand, you know you see the.